For what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 423, the Pala Band of Mission Indians Land Transfer Act of 2023. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 423, a bill to take certain land located in San Diego County, California, into trust for the benefit of the Paula Band of Mission Indians and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Westerman, and the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Fernandez, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Arkansas. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and to in include extraneous material on H.R. 423, the bill now under consideration. Without objection, the gentleman's recognized. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Madam Speaker, H.R. 423, the Paula Band of Mission Indians Land Transfer Act, introduced by my good friend from California, Congressman Issa, places approximately 721 acres of land the Paula Band of Mission Indians currently owns into trust. The Paula Band of Mission Indians are the Southern California, are in the Southern California town of, of Paula with the reservation totaling approximately 12,000 acres. While the tribal economy is largely supported by agricultural enterprises, the tribe also operates a 4,000 square foot class three casino and resort. In the early 1990s, San Diego County voters approved a plan to establish the Gregory Canyon Landfill Project on a 1,700-acre parcel of land along State Route 76, west of the Paula Bands Reservation. Plans for development of the landfill ceased when the original owner of the property fell into bankruptcy in 2014. A successor company began exploring other development opportunities and began meeting with the tribe to sell a portion of the land to the tribe for cultural preservation as it contains cultural sites and components meaningful to the Paula Band. In 2016, 721 acres were purchased by the tribe. Paula Band Chairman Robert Smith testified to Congress that these acres were historically occupied by native peoples and is the site of an ancestral village rock art paintings, and ancient artifacts. H.R. 423 does not affect any current land and water rights, nor does it impact any rights of way or rights of use that are currently permitted. The bill also prohibits any gaming pursuant to the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act on these lands. I want to thank Congressman Issa for his leadership on this issue. I support the bill and I urge my colleagues to do the same. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentlewoman from New Mexico is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is an honor to be uh, on the floor of the People's House once again in support of this bill as we hope to pass it out of the House. It passed uh, in the 117th Congress, and I have uh, great expectations that it will do so again. H.R. 423, the Paula Band of Mission Indians Land Transfer Act, introduced by Representative Issa from California, will direct, as noted, uh, a the transfer of approximately 721 acres of land into trust for the Paula Band of Mission Indians. The Paula Band is located in northern San Diego County with 918 enrolled tribal members. Members of the Paula Band belong to the Cupeño and Luiseño tribes who were forced together by Spanish Franciscan missions during the 1800s. The Paula Band recently purchased the property that includes the remaining portion of Gregory Mountain that is not on the existing Paula Band reservation and other sacred and culturally significant sites in Gregory Canyon. The land was purchased to protect and preserve Gregory Mountain, Medicine Rock, and other sites considered sacred by Luiseno tribes. Taking land into trust is an integral part of the government-to-government -government relationship between the United States and tribal governments. By maintaining tribal lands, tribal governments can protect and preserve their ancestral homelands or sacred sites considered culturally significant. This bill takes those 721 acres into trust for the benefit of the Paula Band to ensure that the sacred sites and cultural history located on those islands will be honored and appropriately safeguarded. As noted, it also stipulates that current land and water rights are not affected by its enactment, nor is there any effect on any rights of way or rights of use as currently permitted. As 
I'd like to point out that the two bills that we are considering on the floor today have significance beyond the acreage that is being transferred. As noted earlier, the United States has moved from an era where it systematically pushed Native Americans off their ancestral lands through uh, treaties that were broken, as we heard about in the bill we considered earlier, into ever smaller territories of reservation land. There was an effort uh, to try to destroy uh, tribal cultural, and I quote, uh, kill the Indian to save the man, end quote. It has taken far too long, but Congress has finally recognized that tribal nations will not and cannot be vanquished out of existence, and that previous policies were pushing our indigenous nations and tribes into extreme poverty. The 1934 Indian Reg Reorganization Act recognized that allowing tribes to reacquire land and place it into trust was key to the future prosperity of tribes and essential for them to maintain the culturally significant areas that are central to their identity, religion, and beliefs. It has not been an easy path forward since then, but Congress has repeatedly adopted laws that also recognize and strengthen tribal self-governance and sovereignty. Today's bills are a continuity of this recognition. I want to take this moment to thank Chairman Resterman for bringing these two bipartisan bills to the House floor for passage in the first few weeks of our legislative business in the People's House. I often know that the Subcommittee on Indian and Insular Affairs, previously known as the Subcommittee for Indigenous Peoples, is some of the most bipartisan work in the House. It is extremely important work that we do for millions of Native Americans, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians who rely on Congress to act consistent with the trust responsibility we owe tribal nations and peoples. Congress must legislate on issues regarding criminal jurisdiction, health and education funding, and so much more. Each member of this body represents Native Americans, and many of us represent one or more of the 574 federally recognized tribes. In some districts, like mine, they represent a significant portion of the population, and in many districts, tribes are major drivers of the economy. Approximately 56 million acres of land are held in trust for tribes and individuals, and they are proud stewards of the natural resources on those lands. Last week, one of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle belittled this important congressional work by calling it similar to naming post offices. Such a statement does not recognize the importance of our work on Congress on tribal issues. In contrast, uh, Chairman Westerman's presentation of these bills today demonstrates his commitment and leadership on tribal issues. Once again, thank you, Chairman Westerman, for recognizing how important our work is for tribal nations and peoples. I support this bill. I thank Representative Issa for bringing it once again uh, to Congress and to the floor of the House, and I urge my colleagues to vote in favor. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield five minutes to the sponsor of the bill, the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa. The gentleman is recognized. I thank the uh, chairman. Madam Speaker, I spoke on this a year ago or two years ago, and not much has happened except more time has passed since this land was taken from this tribe. I represent 21 tribes in my congressional district. Uh, I believe that when I come to the floor, people look and say, well, you're always representing tribal issues. I represent the issues that became an issue when Ulysses S. Grant recognized that, there, that what he had done wrong to tribes, and we began the process over 100 years ago of turning around that challenge. As the ranking member mentioned, in 1934, we passed significant legislation. Much has happened since that time. One of the things that has happened is here on the House floor, we talk about CBO scoring. And I want to touch on that today, which I didn't do a year ago. CBO says this has a cost. Yes, when we move land into trust, when we move it into federal ownership, it, gets a, it, it loses property tax. So there is a small cost. This is not a cost objected to by my county or any of the surrounding cities. The Native American tribes in my district have more than compensated from the revenues they earn to the community, and they have been good stewards. 
This land failed to even qualify as a landfill over decades. This is land that to many would be considered not usable. It has water challenges that the tribe will be spending time and money making sure that they prevent the runoff, that they preserve. They have antiquity on this site. They will be investing in that. But yes, a few members, mostly in my own party last year, failed to vote for this because they said, well, it's an unfunded mandate. It costs a little money. Yes, it costs money to transfer things into the federal hands because we lose a little bit of revenue. But over 100 years ago, far over that, actually during the Spanish time, this land was taken from a people and there was no compensation. So as we put it back, I would ask each of the members who considered not voting for it a year ago to reconsider, to consider that every piece of every objection other than that small one has been taken care of. The tribe will be a better steward of the land than it is now. The land will be better preserved and will be used in a way that certainly, if you can't qualify as a landfill, it's not exactly the land everybody's looking for. The reality is the Paula Band has taken what they have earned over the years in agriculture and from their, uh, their gaming concession, and they are putting it back into putting to act together their ancestral land. I have another tribe that we're working on that is trying to simply get their graveyard back into trust. We will have the same challenge that they'll say, but the graveyard uh, might have a, an economic cost when it goes into federal land. So I expect this bill to pass. It passed in the last Congress but I would hope that all of my members would look very carefully and say, you know, not all transfers are the same. None of them are the same as naming a post office, although naming a post office after a fallen hero is not without its own merit. So I thank the chairman and ranking member. I hope that my thoughts, in addition to the, uh, the kind words said by both sides, will convince us to be united this year. This is an important piece of legislation for a people who have done everything we've asked them to do and more. With that, I yield back. I thank the gentleman for his uh, tireless advocacy on behalf of his constituents and particularly the Paula Band uh, in this instance. I know he's worked on this more than just uh, this year. And I do urge adoption of the, of the bill. I have no further requests for time, I'm prepared to close and reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Arkansas reserves. The gentlewoman from New Mexico is recognized. Uh, thank you, Representative Isa, for that great summary of the importance of this land uh, to the Pala Band and the fact that we will actually probably see some economic benefit once they uh, show, because they know how to be good stewards of the land, and they know what they're going to be doing with this land rather than letting it sit in the condition it does now. I have no further requests for time, and we are also prepared to close. And I urge my colleagues to support the legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields back. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Madam Speaker, H.R. 423 is common sense legislation, just like the previous bill that we looked at. And it will enable the Paula Band of Mission Indians to protect their sacred land and ensure the protection of the tribe's timeless heritage, culture, tradition, and history. Again, thank my colleague, Mr. Asa, for his leadership and for filling a vital constituent service. I urge my colleagues to support this legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 423? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table.